Jule Tsangmale. Nga la dak la lep, lo jip chiu janga nga la. Ka ne karu lep, skat lapspin, nirai yul nilam tsok stemo sorapin. Nang panang chipa, nang pul dugapin, lo ngap kai nanga, zing mu mana masom. Suang zera miruk, nga jan nyal bachanin, jan gius met, suang zera miruk. Sang me ze chen, tung bos zabosin, sem basket ponang, jiwa chan, sten delika dulte, nirai yul, tik sten sang me pia, makak chanduk, dang dring, nirai yul, spetsoks, Makak chanduk. So I'm saying to my Ladakhi friends that I arrived in Ladakh 45 years ago. I learned to speak the language. I went through the entire region and I found a country that was like a dream. Buddhists and Muslims had been living peacefully side by side. There had never been group conflict. I never heard anyone say, we're poor, we're backward, we don't know anything. Instead, they said, we are self-sufficient. We have plenty to eat, plenty to drink. There was a joy and an amazing peacefulness in this culture. And that's why Ladakh is a very important model for the world today. We're in a world that stands at a crossroads. It's a world where we all need to wake up and choose between a path that will take us back home to nature, to this incredible living Gaia, forever changing, forever rich, forever beautiful. It's our home, it's our mother, it's the air we breathe, it's who we are. We need to come back home, but unfortunately, we have had so-called civilizations that base their whole being on conquering others, conquering nature, and we've had a particularly global system coming from the West that was based on destroying cultural diversity, self-reliance in different cultures and at the same time particularly in the modern era this path destroyed self-esteem now this path is still being promoted by many blind leaders but when you look around the world at the grassroots you will see everywhere you go that people long for connection. They long to have contact with life. And that means deeper contact between human beings, as well as much deeper contact with the plants, with the animals, with the place where we live. That path is what I call localization. And our Economics of Happiness conferences are about helping to bring people together in different regions in the world to come together, to collaborate, to really strengthen and build that path towards nature, towards community. In re-establishing our relationships to others and to nature, we are reconnecting deeply our minds, our hearts and our bodies. We're becoming whole again. We become happier. We become healthier. Now in this world where there seems to be so much money, so much pressure in the opposite direction, what can we do? Well, for me, it's become clear that one of the most important actions 
activism has to do with awareness, with consciousness. It has to do with realizing that we do have a choice. And not only that we have a choice, but that the two different paths are being played out in front of us. If we look closer to the ground, we will see on every continent, people beginning to rebuild economies of interdependence, interdependence that is more human scale, more human pace. It's about slowing down and it's about scaling down. Actually, smaller and slower is truly more beautiful. It is truly more happy. And this is why the economics of happiness is promoting this path towards localizing. In order to be effective, we need to raise awareness about changing the I to a we. One of our first tasks will be to connect to some like-minded people so that we together at the community level can start forging a different path, a different development path that nurtures natures, that nurtures intergenerational community, that nurtures a life where our minds, our hearts and our bodies really are connected and in tune. We're listening to what our bodies and our hearts need. We also need to be collectively strengthening our voices for a political change. We believe that in order to do so, we need to go beyond the political theater at the national level. Unfortunately, in most countries, the political theater has become truly meaningless. Left and right and everything else that's being presented is not addressing those important fundamental issues of what will nourish us as whole human beings and what will nourish the earth, what will nourish genuine biodiversity that will allow the local species of plants, the local animals to thrive. We know in Ladakh that for centuries local knowledge, deep knowledge about the specific climate, the specific animals and plants is what sustained Ladakh in a truly successful way. Doesn't mean it was perfect, doesn't mean it can't change, doesn't mean that you can't, as we have done with the Ladakh Ecological Development Group, with many of the groups we've worked with in Ladakh, we've shown that yes, we can have renewable energy, we can have more contact with the outside world, we can have more trade, but we mustn't sacrifice that absolutely fundamental principle of more human scale, and more ecological scale, and that requires a slower pace. It requires the time it takes to nurture, to love and care and nurture for our children, for our aged people, for the animals and plants. That's the path forward. That's the economics of happiness, and we need to do everything we can to build that at the local level, while raising awareness about the need for fundamental political change that will require international collaboration. And that's why this conference is so important. We have some beloved colleagues who have come all the way to Ladakh to help inspire and strengthen an international movement towards localization. I hope all of you will come away feeling inspired, strengthened, and ready to collaborate for this very exciting and, and very real potential for a different future. I so wish I could be there. I'm sorry that my health didn't allow for it, but I am with you 
with my heart and my spirit. Thank you so much for coming, all of you.